there was some chatter at Jordan Brand Classic <laughs> that Melo was going around telling our teammates, hey, yo, jo JJ's not getting MVP of this game. <laughs> Don't pass it to Listen, him. <laughs> this is me. Let me clear this up. <laughs> Yo, welcome back, man. 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. I'm Carmelo Anthony here with my co-host. It's your boy, the Kid Mero, man. Yes, I stopped doing aliases, so I'm gonna chill for one episode, but I'm coming back next week. <laughs> this is 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original, and it's presented by Prize Picks. Don't forget it. With that being said, this morning we have a special guest, uh, a really good friend of mine. A lot of history between y'all two. Virginia's very own. From the old man uh, in the threes podcast, LeBron's new co-host on Mind the Game, uh, and my fellow class of 2002, Jordan Brand Classic and McDonald's All American, JJ Reddick. Both Welcome to 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. Let's go. What's good, bro? Talk to us. <laughs> What's going on in the, the JJ's verse? <laughs> a lot of accolades, bro. There's a lot of accolades we just read off over there. There's a lot going on. It There's is a lot, lot going, going on. on. It is. It is. It is. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys, man. I'm glad this worked out. You brought up the history, and I've, I've teased him about this before, <laughs> but we played. We were the same high school class. We played in the McDonald's All-American game. The following week was the Jordan Brand Classic, and Melo had a great game in the McDonald's <laughs> game. Oh, shit. And I feel like I probably had a little bit better of a game, and, and I ended up getting MVP. And there was some chatter at Jordan Brand Classic <laughs> that Melo was going around telling our teammates, hey, yo, jo JJ's not getting MVP of this game. <laughs> Don't pass it to Listen, him. This is me. <laughs> Let me clear this up. But time, before, before, before you clear it up, where was the game, champ? So, uh, yeah, yeah. where was the game yeah, It was at? in D.C. It was in D.C. Okay. Oh, come on it now. Was, it was 2002. Jordan Brand Classic. It, was, it used to be the Capital Classic before. And the Jordan Brand took it over. And he won MVP at McDonald's. I've never told anybody I'm not, I'm not passing him the fucking ball. <laughs> I thought we was going to be co- MVP. Oh, okay. Of the McDonald's game. Okay. Uh, has that ever happened before? I feel like it's happened. I think so. I, I would thought I'm mistaken. It happened. That's I want to say like one of the two or three years after O2. I feel like it was like Dwight and J.R. Smith or something. Uh, there was like one year where there were two guys. I only tease him about it. <clears throat> I took seven shots. He took 24. I was home. <laughs> but that, but that, that's exactly why I said that. I was, I was like, home. listen, when you home... It's was different. Going. I said, damn, I can't not get one this summer. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got to show up, man. It's the home crowd. You got McDonald's. <laughs> fuck it. I got to get one. Damn. Listen, between the two of y'all, it's, you know, it's a lot of trophies, a lot of medals. You still got those trophies? And where they at? They're in the storage unit. They're in the garage. They're on the mantle. Real quick. So I, I, I moved into a house. I bought a house my rookie year right after I got drafted. And right when you walked in, there was like a French door and an office space with like built-in shelving. So I was like, this is great. So I put up all the trophies. I put up plaques and pictures, all the meaningful stuff for my career. And then I had a terrible rookie season and I took all that shit off the wall, <laughs> put it in storage. I haven't, I, other than when I've moved it from one house to another, I haven't looked at it. I don't, I know they're in a storage unit. Yeah. I think they're in a storage unit on, on Long Island somewhere. You took it down on some like mental <laughs> on think. Long Island somewhere. It's somewhere, it's somewhere, somewhere well, on Long I, Island. I, 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 Bridgehampton. Flex on one time. <laughs> we are taping before the play-in. You know what I mean. So do remember, follow, like, and subscribe. Obviously, you know what I mean. The number one show on the internet in its entirety, because we got a very legendary episode coming with the one and only. Stefan Starberry Marbury. You know what I mean? That's a goodie. You know, that's a woo boy, that's a, that's a banger, goodie. man. That's a heater is ready to come out. We have a segment here, what we call 7 p.m. moments. Where it's a moment in your career, in your life. It doesn't mm -hmm. have necessarily have basketball related, but a moment in your life where you said, All right, JJ, like, JJ's here, JJ's about to go here. 
for me to get here, I gotta really lock in, man. And this is a moment in life that catalyzed that path. How many ups and downs did you have in your career? Countless? I probably have more ups and downs than successes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we all think of success in this linear way where it's like, we're here and we wanna get here. Oh, I made this decision. Now I'm gonna go here. And it just doesn't look like that. Like I hope to get here, but I just feel like there's all these peaks and valleys within a season, within a career. I had multiple moments like that you're talking about. I think one for me would be after my sophomore year at Duke, really struggled that year, um, kind of hit, hit like rock bottom. It was like basically hiding from people, like hiding from the coaching staff, hiding from my parents. I had like an incomplete that semester. I was really just like at this dude's apartment for like two weeks. The coaches found me, Wojo and Collins, who you know from mm -hmm. USA Basketball, they found me, took me to coach's office. They got it like a plan for me and I fell in love with the routine. But then like, you know, I had two good, two more good years in college and then I didn't play my first two years. So after that second year, it was like, I gotta change my body. I gotta get in better shape. I gotta be the best conditioned athlete. So I went back to Duke, trained that whole summer. I played my third year, it wasn't a great year. I was still in and out of the rotation at times. You know, and then fourth year, I finally like played every game. So like those moments, it wasn't like I did it and then I had immediate success or immediate rewards a month later. It took years and years and years to get to the point where someone like me could average 18 in the season, right? Yeah. And, and start and be, be a full-time starter. Like it wasn't, it wasn't one decision or, or one moment. It was just a series of them to hopefully get to the point where you're like, all right, <clears throat> I feel good about my career. I feel good. When was did you when, feel it? Because I I felt like other than winning a championship, mm -hmm. I didn't leave anything on the table. Yeah, meaning like I I like I maximized what I had. Did yeah, you feel like you did that? I feel like I did that for what I have. Yeah, like I did the best that I can do with what was in front of me, with the cards that was dealt to me. I feel like I did the best with those cards that I can do. I mean, there's always room when you sit back and like, damn, I could have did that a little better or yeah. I could have did more. Yeah. But overall, I would say like, I feel like I played my hand the best way that I can play my hand. That makes sense. So like, and, and, and going back to you, because you had a very, you had a very specific role in the NBA throughout your whole career, right? A lot of people, players don't accept their roles like that. Like you were considered a, a role player, right? Yeah. And, and you was a role player and the best that, one of the best to do it. People don't want to accept that today. It's not cool to just be a J.J. Redick and just running off screens. Also, the game is different today yeah. as well. What was the moment that you had to decide, like, damn, you know what, this, I'm going to take this. This is what they need me, need me to do, and I'm going to be the best at this. Um, you know, to start my NBA career, it was just a matter of survival, where you legitimately think there's a chance you could be out of the league. Yeah. And I was not, I don't know, I don't remember all the specific conversations we even had at, at like the McDonald's All-American game. I remember, I remember Evan Burns, mm -hmm, great absolutely. player, you know, had a, had a bad knee injury in college, uh, you know, didn't have a, a, an NBA career, but Evan was a really talented guy. And I remember, you know, all of us, we, were, we would have conversations around the NBA I just remember from that week, like, you know, whether it was Stat or yeah. you, uh, CB, Chris Bosch, like, I remember just thinking to myself, like, how are these guys so sure they're going to play in the NBA? Like, the, you guys, it's, it's such conviction that you're going to be an NBA player. I did not think that, though, right? It was not a thing. So when I first got to the league, I was very grateful. And then it became like, oh, how do I survive? But ultimately, I view basketball this way. I think everybody's a role player, Mello. Yeah, indeed. You had a role. Absolutely. Jason Tatum has a role. It's not the same role as Peyton Pritchard. Yeah. I think great players and great teams, they buy into whatever role they're they're given. And I know like even later on in your career, there was there were times where you're like, Oh, I'm gonna have to take on a different role with this group or yeah. with this you team. You gotta buy into that role. And you true. then you have to buy into it. it. my first year in Philly, I averaged a career high. They came to me 
in preseason, and they were like, we want to start Markel Fultz. We want to bring you off the bench. We had just had the best five-man lineup yeah. in the NBA this previous season. Absolutely. And I was a part of that lineup. And I was like, okay. Because I knew I'm still going to play 30 minutes a game. You know, he, he had Manu record some stuff about his role and transition to, to being a six-man. And I was like, Brett, you don't need to even play that for me. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm all in. Like, if that's what you need for the team, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Right? I'm good. Like, I'm still going to finish games. You're still going to need my shooting. I, I, it's, not, it's not that. So I always knew whatever the definition of, like, a role player. Like, I always knew. I, I'd never, I never thought I was going to be you or LeBron or Steph. Like, I, I never thought that. So it was easier, I think, for me because I didn't have this preconceived notion of, like, I'm going to the league and I'm going to be an all-NBA player. I was like, I would love – I could play in the NBA and have a good long career. Yeah. yeah. But at, at a certain point it became reality. When right. did yeah. when did it become reality for you when you were like, yo, I'm going to the league? Was it like I'm gonna suit up and go to the draft? What is it? You know what I mean? Was he was it, going was, to the league, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the humble I love the humble no, shit, JJ. I love the humble shit, but like be real. Like you uh, were like at so, Duke, so it was so it was, it was in the span of a year. Sophomore year, we lose to UConn. I had to, you know, again, I had struggled that whole year. And I get on the plan, which was basically like hour by hour schedule, started seeing a therapist. And a year later, um, ACC player of the year, ACC tournament MVP, Rupp national player of the year. I go out to the Wooden Award because that was the week after the Final Four. All the other awards were at the Final Four. So I go out to LA for the Wooden Award. And, you know, it's like me, uh, Bogut ended up winning. I was second. It was me, Bogut. I think Sean May, a couple other guys. And Sean and I were friends from McDonald's All American. Yep. And even though he went to UNC. So we were hanging out that whole week and he had an agent meeting. And he was like, yo, come to lunch. I'm meeting with such and such agent. I was like, okay. And I went to the lunch and they're talking. And my dad was out there and I was like, Dad, should I be talking to an agent? Should I be thinking about going to the NBA? Like it like that was in a year. I'm the national player of the year in college. And I'm still like, should I be? Should I? Should I? <laughs> so like at that moment, now now you start seeing yourself on mock drafts and yeah. shit and you're like, oh, okay. I think I'm going to be an NBA player. I still decided to go back to Duke, but like I knew after my junior year, I was going to have a chance. But at the beginning of my junior year, coming off my sophomore year, I took Italian so that I, if I had to go play overseas, I would... I knew, I, knew, <laughs> I knew a language. I'm dead serious, bro. I'm Stop. dead serious. So you see all this press, all this stuff, and you're still in your head, you, you're like, yo, I don't know if this 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 could go left. I just, <laughs> shit wasn't I, going, I don't like making assumptions. Shit was going left. Left. I don't like making I assumptions. Shit was not going left. Yeah. I don't like making like, assumptions. Listen, when they talk about Duke, you know, it's like Christian Leitner. You know what I'm saying? J.J. Reddick, like, it's in, you're in that pantheon. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, like, come on, dog. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I think what is, and I, I try to explain this to people. Like, even with my kids that I coach, their, their fourth grade travel team, I started coaching them last year on a third grade travel team. And, like, they all think they're going to the NBA, which is great because when I was, eight years old, I was like, I'm going to go play at Duke. It's a far-fetched dream. I'm sure at some point, whether it was eight, 11, 13, right? I never you had that about, moment. I never thought about Duke, though. No, no, no. I'm saying, but you had that moment. You had that moment. <laughs> Duke, they didn't want no, no. They they you didn't had want that me. moment where you like, I want to play in the NBA. Absolutely. You had that dream, right? Absolutely. What I try to explain to people <laughs> is that that's great. There are millions, potentially billions of people that have that same dream. And there's 450 jobs and there's about 60 jobs every year that get turned over. So you, you should never assume you're going to be in the NBA. Sure. I think one of the issues we are having in America right now is that in youth basketball, we are anointing kids too soon. Not everybody is LeBron James. Not everybody can handle that level of pressure and attention and not let it affect them. Developmentally, if you're telling a 14 or 15 year old kid you're going to be an NBA star someday, they think they're already an NBA star, and that's a problem. You gotta keep them humble. Not just humble. You have to have a level of perspective of what it takes. It the NBA is 
as cutthroat as any fucking business in the world. Listen, we sit on- As I, any I, business in the world. I sit and I say the same thing every episode on here. The NBA is hard as shit. Like it's, <laughs> like it's, it's hard to get into the NBA and it's even harder to stay there year in and year out. Like it's very, very fucking hard. So I'm glad somebody else is actually if you go, that. If you go to school, Stanford. if you go to school and you get your law degree, or you go to school and you get your uh, medical license for whatever, MD, DO, whatever, I don't, there, there's obviously continuing education and requirements that you have to make that you have the job. In the NBA, you pass a test when you sign up your first contract. You are then tested every single day. And I'll be honest with you, even with the guaranteed contracts, like if you're, a, if you're an asshole, if you're not performing well, they will get rid of your ass. And it's funny because like I think in the NBA too, it's like there's this scale of whatever baggage we all have because we all have some level of baggage and our talent. And as long as your talent outweighs the baggage, you're good. You'll probably have a job. But the second that scale gets shifted and there's imbalance in that, you're out of the league. Yeah. Peace out. Even – and. I mean, how many, there, there's hundreds of players right now that could be on an NBA roster. Absolutely. And they're playing overseas or they're playing in the G League or they're sitting at home training. It's, the NBA never means one plus one equals two. Never. It's, it's so hard to get into it and then it's so hard to stick. Speaking of staying in the NBA, <laughs> there's a lot of the players. Yeah, right. That, that hey, was a lot. <laughs> Come on, you know you, you know what you're doing, lady. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that will not be staying in the NBA for the rest of the season because the playoffs is right around the corner. I yeah. want to hear from y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I'm I'm the I'm the fan on the couch screaming. You know what I mean? With mm -hmm. alcohol, y'all are have been in the playoffs and now are on the other side. You know what I mean? On the media side, what is one series? Each of y'all, I'll start with you, JJ, that you are locked in, focused on. I know what mine is. Interesting. Man. Like, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be so exciting. So we're recording this uh, two day, a day before the Western Conference play-in and yep. two days before the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. So we don't know seven, eight seeds. Um, I think of this, the seeds that are set, uh, I think it's very likely that all of the Cleveland Cavaliers and Orlando Magic games are on NBA TV. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm, but that, well, I'm I mean, not that, that's fucked up. <laughs> that, that is fucked up. Thank you. you. you know, I, I, I know him. So I, I, I know what he's fucking saying. I didn't listen. He's I'm, not dissing it. I'm picking he up what you're saying. Him. That is fucked up. Man. There's a lot we to, had to like laugh. with both those yeah. teams. <laughs> yes. I think the general public would not say that's the most From intriguing series. From a business series. standpoint, it's I, fucked I'm up. not making it's fun fucked of up that, we, that clear. we're laughing <laughs> right. oh, that's and it's on, that it's on NBA TV. <laughs> right. But it that, should be, that should be the, where people go to watch it. You know what I mean? It should be bigger than what, but yeah, that's another was. conversation. But I know my man though. <laughs> hey, I look. know what you're saying. Look. It's a, Those are fun. It's, listen, I get it. It's like, you want the big draws, the big markets yeah. to get the, I ain't gotta tell you, man, you've been doing this. Like, look, I, I, I the, the, cat, uh, the, the Clippers Mav series, those two teams met back to back years, 20 and 21. Uh, there's a history there. Um, Mavs have played as well as any team in the NBA down the stretch of the season. Clippers at one point in time looked like, if not Denver, they're the second best team in the West or the best team in the West and, and then hit a, a rough stretch post-February. But like that to me is probably, at least of what we know, the most intriguing and exciting series. Uh, the star power alone in that series with, with PG and James and, and Kawhi and Russ and then Luka on the other side, Luca and Kyrie, like that's legitimate. That's legitimate. That's a fun series. Yeah, we and, and, the, and the tactical part of it is yes, interesting yes, to me too, because yes. T. Lou and, and J. Kid in a playoff it's series, two of the best, two of the best. They're, they're, they're two yeah. of the best minds when it comes to strategy and and, and playing that that chess game. Yeah. And you know, I always said coaching comes into play in the playoffs. Yeah. Like it was your talent and your stars and but coaching has a big role in the playoffs. 
And that's something I always admire about J. Kid because he knows it's a different level of being tactical when it comes to the playoffs. Like I'm not trying to beat you as a as as your team. I'm trying to beat your your leader. Right. Right. I, I have to go out there and, and and do what I gotta do and strategize and 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 figure this out. So I'm playing against I'm putting a plan together for my own team, but I'm also putting a plan together to beat you, T Lou. And T Lou is saying the same thing. Yeah. So that's a to your point, that's a that's a very interesting from a star power and from two head coaches. I also like the I also like the the Pacers Bucks matchup. Um, I like, just because I of think, everything okay, that yes, has yes, happened yeah. this yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. That's a disrespectful and, uh, <laughs> matchup. <laughs> Yo, that's and, and, nasty. You know, so you know, Pacers beat them in the in season tournament. They win four out of the five games against them. And and then there's the the Giannis gate with the the ball on the career high. Uh, ultimately, I think the Bucks had the ball the whole time, but there was some confusion <laughs> on the court. But it just adds a layer. And I think, truthfully, I, I you know I, I'm not going to speak for anybody on the Pacers, but I, I think truthfully, like the Pacers wanted the Bucks yeah. in the first round. Yeah. Um. And and of course we you know we don't know. Uh, they were saying today that his availability, Giannis's availability for game one is up in the air. So we don't know Giannis's status, Oof. but I still think that series is, is really intriguing. That is a... That's a storyline series. That's a spicy series. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Kyle Burton in the playoffs that's, for the first time. He, yeah, right? that's a like, spicy series right there. Yeah. Because there's it's no love lost like between those two teams. Listen, we're taping before the play-in tournament, but let's discuss both potential scenarios for my beloved... New York Knickerbockers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who do they match up with better? The Sixers or the Heat? Because these are the potential opponents for the, for the, for the Knicks. Mm. <laughs> you know, there was a, it's interesting. There's so much discourse this year uh, around Jalen Brunson. And I saw, you know, he can't be a 1A because he's small. And, and there's truth to that in the sense that in the history of the NBA, or at least the modern NBA, it's been Isaiah and Steph mm -hmm. as the two guys, right? So... Typically, the best player is not 6'1", 6'2", whatever Jalen Brunson lists himself as. We know he's 5'11". He uses the size of his head to get over <laughs> <six> <laughs> <foot> <laughs> one. He has a big, He has a large cranium. <laughs> he does. He, he does. the biodome? He does. He does. Anyways, anyways. This is still, but this is a 76 year old here. <laughs> Stop. Stop. No, hold on. No, Jalen is my guy, man. He played with him in Dallas. Yeah. So I was on his team in Dallas. But, you know, and then there was the, the a lot of talk. There's not a, there's, you know, they'll, they'll never have the best player in a playoff series. And I, I think we can all, I, I, if you don't agree with this, then I don't know what you've watched this year in the NBA. Jalen Brunson is a top 10 player in the NBA. I did my votes earlier this morning. I had him in the top five in MVP. And I, I, I it's a long explanation, but I had him sixth in terms of all NBA. So he ended up on the second team all NBA. Giannis, I jumped onto the first team. So he's, to me, he was one of the, let's call it six to 10 best players in the league. Yeah. And I think in any matchup, they match up well because they have one of the best players. They have an identity. They have, to our point earlier, they have guys who have completely bought into roles. DiVincenzo all of yep. a sudden be, becoming this high volume, deep three point threat who also guards. I think he was like second in deflections after January 1st in the entire NBA. You got Josh Hart running around doing whatever he does like a madman. Hartenstein has been fucking phenomenal this year on both ends. OG, they're 20 and three in the lineup with OG. I think they're the favorites regardless of who they play. And I know Miami's pedigree in the playoffs and I know what Philly has in Joel Embiid. To me, the tougher matchup is the Philadelphia 76ers because they have Joel Embiid. And that's that was my follow up question. Yeah. Was that's how do you the feel about matchup. the Knicks not ducking the smoke <laughs> and being like, "Yo, you know what? We want it with you, Joel. Bring it. We got you." Were you ever on teams that did that? What's that? At the end of the season, like intentionally lost games to get a worse seed for mm -hmm. matchup reasons. For matchup reasons, I remember. Was in, I in seventeen? No, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, my first year in Philly. That was the year that Boston got off to a great start, and then Kyrie gets hurt. He's going to miss the season. Yes, yes. And everybody yes. wanted. To, everybody was trying to like duck into the seven seed so they could play Boston yeah. in the first round. I remember and one year Milwaukee did. 
Milwaukee be careful what you ask for. Yeah. We so also ended up getting so the game point, seven of the conference finals. Yeah, to your point, be careful what you ask for. Because it was the year here in New York where we felt like we matched up better with Miami, right? It was, it was like just at that, at that time, we felt like we could match up with them. So we was like, we want Miami. Like, we want to face Miami. We don't want to go play against Indiana first where it's going to be <clears throat> Roy Hibbert and, and, and drawn out and, and fifth, you know what I mean? Like, we don't want that first round. We would, we would get that. We, we would take that. But we feel like we can match up better with Miami. Then we want to win a game or some shit like that. And they got us the fuck out of there, but it was just like, watch what you asked for. <laughs> watch what the fuck you asked for. We ran up, we ran, you know, up against them as they were on their way to being great. You get what I'm saying? Right. So to your point, yeah, you gotta ask what you, you gotta ask what you, you know, watch yeah. what you asked for. But we wanted it though. We we really, we really wanted that. And that was listen, I remember but that. I season, think today, bro. to that point today, I do believe that it's a lot more of that today. Where teams are just like strategy, yeah, like man, we ain't, you know this game, we need that game, we don't need that game, we want. In the end, it's like we want Milwaukee. I think a lot of teams is look like looking at Milwaukee, like we want, we want Milwaukee. You like you the you the antelope in the back of the herd, yeah, and That's you still like, gotta go, but you still Milwaukee is. You still have to go through Milwaukee. Like it's not no, you still have to go through those boys. I agree. You, I like, agree. You can't we we can't I, be disrespecting them like they sweet, but. As teams are saying, we want Milwaukee because they may feel like that. But you still have to beat Milwaukee. I, I feel like part of the reason that if, if it's true that teams are trying to get specific matchups in the first round or trying to avoid a certain team's bracket yes. for the second round so that they can get to the conference finals. I think one of the things that has happened in the last few years is there's more parity. Yes. Right. There's more good teams. The depth of talent to me is higher than it's ever been. And it's more spread out yes. than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Where you can have, you go down the list. I, I did the all NBA stuff today. And it's like, you got play in teams with two guys who have legit all NBA seasons on 46, 47 win teams. Right. <laughs> you have Philly in that seven spot with, an MVP and an all-star all-NBA player in Tyrese Maxey. Yes. That's what you're getting in the seven spot. Yes. So if you're thinking about, well, we got to avoid this team, like, yeah, I think it's there's some truth to that because playoffs are about matchups and how you can exploit other teams' weaknesses. It's not just about, oh, we're the better team. That do, that's doesn't The better team doesn't always win in a playoff mm -hmm. series. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that's why I say teams are – they plot. I think even more so today is just they looking. Everybody's watching the same thing. Everybody's reading and hearing the same comments and same feedback from the games and teams and piggybacking off of what everybody else is saying. So I, I do believe like these players are actually seeking out teams and players that they want to match up against. Yeah, and I think it's. I mean, and it's, it's it's it may not be to the point where it's like a big big conversation, but it's internally happening. Nah, I definitely believe that. I mean, y'all can y'all can confirm or deny, but like, I feel like shit is more data driven now. Where it's just like, look, we match up, we played this team this amount of times during the season, we match up well, da 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 da. Fuck so that. let's let's that goes out the window. In playoff time, it goes out the window. It's different. It's just it's just different. It feels different. That's what I'm saying. Like every, it feels like every possession. It feels more like almost like football. Where like every time you have the ball in your possession, you gotta make something happen. You know what I mean? Because this could be what makes or breaks this game. Well, every and possession, stuff like every that, and possession it's like the series. counts. Yeah. So going off of that, JJ, what was your like? Yo, we in the playoffs now, motherfucker. This shit is different. Like for you, that that first moment, like was it a elbow in the chest of the hard <laughs> pick? You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the tea bag on a dunk, like what? Would, like I, my first, right, my on. first two years. My first two years, I had like brief, like I think my rookie year, we got swept by the Pistons. I played maybe ten minutes in game four. Did I feel right. like damn? 
Did I feel like the 2K? You know 2K when you got your creator player, you just watch? No, because those guys. <laughs> you on a bench. You on a bench watch? Really? Rip, Rip and, and Rashid and those guys were so hard on me in the regular season my rookie year. They were just brutal whenever I would check and do a game against oh, them. I can imagine, bro. So I knew that was coming. I think the, the second year I played briefly against Toronto in the first round. We lose to the Pistons again. The third year is when I was like, okay, this is what the playoffs is. And that was you know, I, I played a little bit early in the series against Philly in the first round, but I started game six because Courtney Lee broke his face. Dwight had gotten suspended for elbowing Dallin Barrett. So me and Martian Gortat started on the road in the closeout game. And then I started seven straight games against the defending champ, Boston Celtics. And that's when I was like, oh, this is the fucking playoff. This is level. And KG was out that series. <laughs> oh, and every time I would walk by their bench, he'd be just fucking yeah. yapping in my Trash ear. Trash ass motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pope bitch ass motherfucker. White boy. White boy. Fuck that. out of here, white boy. Love that. Love I that. know. Pull that I know. shit. I dare you. I fuck out of here. I'll guard you, bro. He can't guard you, bro. He can't guard you. I know already. He got no lateral quickness. Disrespectful. He don't want to say exactly what the fuck was said. Yeah, along those lines, uh, it's right. shit that was being said. Listen, yeah. I'm gonna I'm say it. I'm gonna say it for y'all. You know what I mean? Because I know y'all are very humble guys. I'm gonna uh, say it for yeah. y'all. Y'all could probably go out there and give. You know what I'm saying? A a a a, a, need, a, a team that needs a need. I'm cool. Y'all could fill a need on a playoff team right now. If you could jump on any playoff team right I'm now, cool. I'm good. What? I'm enjoying this over here. This <laughs> no, 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 no. I know you and Chris are doing it. We be chilling. I know, but listen. <laughs> Video game status. You you could insert prime JJ Reddick, prime Melo Ooh. on any playoff roster right now. What yeah. roster is it, and how are you making? How are you taking them over the top? It's mm. a good fucking scenario. Mm. Right you know what I'm saying? I hate to think about it, but <laughs> I'd like to play with Jokic. Honestly, it would be good. With Just you. shore up their bench a little bit. You know, fifteen to twenty minutes, a little bit more shooting at volume. You know. Ray Allen in, ball, in Miami. Two, two, two man, yeah, Ray Allen in Miami. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. In my prime, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will gladly, in my prime, <laughs> in my prime. <laughs> play 15 minutes a game. <laughs> Which I get to be on that team you with go Jokic. To, they, they up, you up 30, 32. You're not going to the rack one time trying to, try to ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, the other team, I, I mean, like the, the way that Joe Missoula has gotten, like, complete, complete buy-in from his guys, they've all... It's weird. They've all had incredible seasons, but they've all at the same time taken a step back mm. in terms of like the individual, I got to put up this amount of shots. I got to put up this amount of, like it's across the board in their top six. And then you have Hauser and Peyton Pritchard coming off the bench, having career years. I, 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 that, that type of environment. Oh man, give me that. Give me that. Where like, like Drew Holiday's like, I was an all-star last year high volume player i'm willing now to experiment on defense whatever joe needs for me and i'll be a corner corner three-point shooter and night to night depending on how teams are because a lot of teams cross match against them they'll put a big on drew so night to night drew doesn't know what role he's going to play am right. i going to be a facilitator am i going to be a spot-up shooter am i going to be a screener he doesn't know that night to night and he's got complete buy-in from all the guys across the board that's the type of team you want to play on is that hard to do? Like, not from an ego point, but just from like a, a yo business. Like, you know, I gotta, I gotta put up a certain amount of points. I gotta, I gotta perform at a certain level, or else, you know, I'm in a contract year. Blah blah blah. How much of that goes into, you know, I the, the buy-in? I, I think when you, when you reach a certain <clears throat> point in time in your career, yeah, it's it's a no-brainer, right? I think a lot of the noise come from the outside. Like you can't do it or they're not willing to do it. But in your mind, you know. You know, I'm, if I'm looking at a team, I know what I'm able to bring to this team and what I have to do and what I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, of course I'm going to be willing to play that. I want to come here. I want to be here. I'm looking at this team, this situation very intentionally because I know all I have to do is play a specific role with that. You have to be, you have to be, it's going to sound counterintuitive and maybe like a paradox, but you, you have to be selfish in some ways because being selfish allows you to be who you are mm -hmm. and you, then you have to balance that with what the team needs. Mm. That's the challenge. And, that's, and it's, by the way, it's, it's an art, not a science. That's why it's so hard. I'm sure you were on teams. I was on 15 teams. Take that back. 
Damn. 17 teams because I got traded twice in season. I was on 17 different lo- in 17 That's different crazy. locker rooms. And I would say there's a there's a feeling when you have that complete buy-in and everybody's moving in the same direction and everybody's literally trying to get to one thing. And you may get that in 15 years and on 17, you might get that five times in your career. It's not like it happens every time. And I, I was on good teams that won 50 plus games where I was like, we don't have that level of cohesion that I've experienced my third year in Orlando, mm. right? Or my second year with the Clippers. Like we, 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 when you have it, you know it. And when you don't have it, you're like, yeah, we don't. We, we, don't, we don't got that. Shit. Don't we don't have it. The roles is, is like the role plan is, is, is basically taking ownership. Like, okay, I'm going to be accountable for what I have to do. On where's this role. Where, but, all right, so listen, don't duck the smoke. Jack. Never that. Where never is, that. Where's headband, straight back, mellow, prime time, bucket getter? Where, what 2024 team are you jumping on right now to, to, to take them to the Larry? Hmm. I've got, my, I've got mine for mellow, for prime mellow. I've got mine. I honestly think, to be honest with you, New York. Mm. And I'm, I'm going to say this because I've always wanted to play with, like, my thing is I, I wanted a, <clears throat> a point guard. Like, I always needed, felt like I needed somebody like a, a Andre Miller like or Chauncey Billups. Like, I needed somebody at that position that was a big guard, you know, could post up, could, you know, know how to run a, a team, right, but still can do what they do. And I always needed somebody like a power forward, like a very explosive power forward at the four. Just toughness, a Kenya Martin, somebody like that. I just think the way that the Knicks roster is put together, they have a lead guard that's very, he can lead. So it takes it off of me to just try to go do everything. And now I can just be prime mellow and just, I have a role on this specific team right here to go score. Get the buckets. Go do, go, go, go play that role for us. Because we got everything else. We got defenders. We got three point shooters. We got a head of a hell of a coach. Prime Mello and Tibbs will have to sit down and have a real conversation. (laughs) (laughs) That's the. Yo, 48 minutes, Tibbs. It's it's a lot of shit that we would have to sit down and iron this out, Tibbs. (laughs) But we going to make it happen. We going to, but I'm going to make it work. (laughs) So I I see that. I like Miami. Miami, I, but I, you know, Miami coach is a little different. But I would say New York or Dallas. Because listen, when Julius I, I like Dallas. Though. I just like that style of play. I like two hitters up there. Like you'd have to, you'd have to sacrifice a lot in Dallas. In terms I said I like them on, on ball usage. I said I like them on ball usage. You'd have to sacrifice a little bit. I'm telling you, the that's per- I'll, stand the in the, I'll, team, I'll stand in the corner the for Luca. Team for I know Luca gonna pass it to the Mello, corner every the time. So. Team for Prime Mello, and I'm not gonna substitute anyone off. No, on or off thing. the roster, on or off the starting lineup. The prime, te- the best team for Prime Mello is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh shit! Ah, the Minnesota okay. Timberwolves. Who's a, oh, me and Cat will have to have a real conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that because my mindset. At that time, Prime Mellow was a different mindset. Like, it was kill mode. It was, and if you ain't willing to kill with me, then you, me and you, gonna, we, we got to have a conversation. Anthony Edwards is somebody that I can have alongside me because I know that he really wanted. I know what he's bringing to the game. I know his work ethic, and I know that he's trying to learn. He would be willing to learn and try to learn. And us together, Ooh, that's a good one. Foundation of a great defense. Yeah, that's a fact. Team that not a great offensive team struggles at times in the half court. If I can give him, give them mellow. Come on, man. Nah, JJ, you just, you just, you see him. Man. <laughs> he did some. He man, did some. Hey, Rob, my team. Hey, Rob, holler at your boy. Nah, that's a, that, that, is, that is a good one. That is a good one. I would love to play with New York too, but with this team, with this. Oh team. yeah, it's a great. But that, that now that you said that, that Minnesota team and. Yeah. Be a good fit. That'd have been special. Prime too. Mellow. Ooh. Them hey, throwback hey. Minnesota Timberwolves jerseys would have been crazy. <laughs> <laughs>
we talk about the future of the game a lot on this show, you know what I mean? And it's 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 looking very uh magnifique. Yeah. With uh say magnifique. Say, say magnifique. Uh listen man, one word from y'all to describe Wemby's rookie season, man, like the impact that he's having. Cause he said he only he's only fifteen percent of the player that he wants to be right now. He's getting seven blocks in the game with his offhand, but he's only fifteen percent of the player that he wants to be right now. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm impressed with his awareness of that. Like most people say that and it's very cliche ish. Like, oh, I'm only fifty percent, but like it's true. It's like he still has to grow yeah, like I'm not even, this summer we going, you got to go get in the gym. You, I mean, I know you working out in weights, but we got to get a nice program for you. And we going to focus on that. The skill work, that shit going to come. You just sharpen the tools on that. But we got, we going to work on a lot of, of small things that's going to get you from 15% to, to where you to, need to, to be. To 100. I would describe, mode. one word to describe his rookie season. That's tough to describe in one word. I'm going to say the word is better because I mm. think it's he's been better than any ex- level of expectation. For someone as, as hyped as he is mm-hmm. or as he was coming into the draft and then the Spurs basically for the first two months of the season playing Jeremy Sohan at point and playing him with Zach Collins where he's the four-man. Experiment. And just experiment with that for two months. <laughs> and then to get to this point at the end of the season, where all of a sudden they move him to the five, play, play Trey Jones with him more, he was better than I could have imagined. His rookie highlight mixtape is going to be fucking insane. Oh. If anything else. <laughs> it's going to look like a 2K Even if it stays at 15%. I was, I, there was a thing this morning I came across, and then there's like, there's all these stats. He's the first player in NBA history with X amount of threes, X amount of blocks, X amount of points. Stats be killing it's, me. He's it's crazy. The one that I was like, what? He, he's the first player since Shaq's MVP year with the Lakers to go 20, 10, three assists, three blocks a game. And he's doing this as a rookie. That's impressive. And if that's 15% of... Yeah, Yo, listen, that's the baseline. We in trouble. Come on, man. So that's the baseline. That's the baseline. That motherfucker. Yeah. You, hey, you in trouble? So you spent, you know, doing the draft, covering the draft. You spent some time with him pre-draft. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you see from him, like mentally? Because we all see physically what the, what he's got. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? But mentally, what puts him, like, you know, in that category to be able to handle that pressure? And be like, yo, the alien, the unicorn. We've never seen nothing like this. And for him to go out and have the season that he's at. Yeah, there was a there was a moment when we talked to him on the podcast last June where I, I actually stopped. I turned to the camera and I said, fuck, this guy's found enlightenment at 19. <laughs> like you brought up the awareness. Like he, he has this amazing ability to be aware of everything happening. It's not like he's shut himself off in a room and is trying to intentionally ignore all of the hype and all of the discourse he's like no i it's out there <laughs> yeah, i gonna, can't change that i'm embracing it and i'm gonna embrace it but at the same time i'm gonna keep my same level of humility and uh, unselfishness i mean the, the stories i heard coming out of out of the spurs camp like even early in the season where he was getting asked, like there, there was a Drake concert in Austin and he got asked to come up on stage and because Drake was doing that with a bunch of NBA guys this off season. And Wemby was like, can my teammates come up on stage with me because they're going to be at the concert with me? And, and Drake's camp was like, no. And he's like, then I don't want to do it. What 19-year-old kid doesn't want to go up on stage with Drake? Yeah. Like he's just, there's been anomalies for star players in that <clears throat> they have been low maintenance I mean, I, I, would, I was a role player and I would describe myself as like somewhat low maintenance. There's like Steph and there's like Tim Duncan. Wemby's one of those guys. You know, yeah. that, that's, that to me is as impressive as anything he does on the court. He's out here, man. He's the future, dog. Like, 
JJ, my man, appreciate yeah. you. Thank you for the insights. You know what I mean? Yo, 7 p.m. in man, Brooklyn. JJ. My man, my man, my man. Yo, shout out to Duke legend JJ Reddick for stopping through 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Number one. Uh, a playoff preview and fuck with it or fuck out of here will continue right after this little break. You know what I mean? Don't move. We're taking a brief break from today's episode to let you know that Prize Picks got you covered when it comes to helping you make some bread. That is correct, champ. The NBA playoffs is right around the corner. Prize Picks is the easiest and the most exciting way to turn every game-changing moment into 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000. Prize Picks also allows you to pick combo projections across basketball and baseball with specials. So you can support all your teams while still cashing in. All right, champ. Time to lock in. I got a couple projections for you. A little more or less okay. situation. All right? First one. More or less. One 40-point game from Jalen Brunson in the playoffs. Is he going to have more than one 40-point game or less than one 40-point game? Let's say more. More. You know what I'm saying? Lock that in. You know what I'm saying? Because I also agree. <laughs> right, next one we got for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> next one we got for you. Melo. You know what I'm saying? The Oracle, the guard. You know what I mean? More or less. Mm -hmm. Triple doubles for Luka Doncic in the playoffs. More or less than two. More. More. Triple double in the playoffs. Yeah. More than two. Say more. More. He's expecting the Luka magic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yo, listen, man, you see how easy that was? Make sure you visit prospects.com slash 7 p.m. and use the promo code 7 p.m. for a deposit match up $200. Hey, Mellow Man, 2024 is already moving along pretty swiftly. You know what I mean? Before you know it, summer's here. And uh, with the summer months comes concerts, shows, things of that nature. There's no better way to copy tickets than by using SeatGeek. That's right, because SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with more than 70,000 events every day from sports to concerts and much more. All of that, you know what I'm saying? Whether you want to check out an NBA playoff game, catch a little hockey, a little MLB action, you know what I mean? SeatGeek got you covered when it comes to finding options for you. SeatGeek also puts all the tickets across the web in one place so you know you're getting the best deal. That's how I like it. Then they rate the tickets on a scale from 1 to 10. You know what I mean? So you know you're not getting no garbage. Every ticket is backed by the buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. So be sure to use our code 7PM for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. Right. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code 7PM. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Go okay, get that. Now back to the show. Number one show on the internet, 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Number one segment in America, you know what I'm saying? The polls is saying it. Fuck it with it or fuck out of here. Carmelo Anthony, the guy, your boy, the kid, Merrill. You know, we got to talk about it, man. The culture, what's going on in the world. AI, our guy, you know what I'm saying? That's a fact. The answer, you know what I'm saying? They, gave us, the, they gave us the answer. They gave us the answer. They gave him his flowers, finally, you know what I'm saying, uh, in Philly. They gave him the statue. Mm -hmm. Only problem was, statue was a statue and like that. You know what okay. I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little smaller than expected. You know what I'm saying? To say the least. So, are we fucking with it or fuck out of here? The 76 is statue for Allen Iverson. So, that's what I'll say. As people, we don't have patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was deep, champ. Look, oh, rip. We yeah, don't have go. patience. We we jumped on, like, just a you know what I mean, a small little snippet of of the statue. Right. Niggas like nah. That's even cool. myself, I am not even gonna hold you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I I should have been more aware of that, but I felt victim the first too, thing too. I seen was like, nah, nah. Like when you just see the screenshots, like nah. That's crazy. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> nah, they didn't put my son on, on. You know what I mean? Like, they got to. I'm like, nah, they, they can't do that. And then I saw the reason why, and it made sense. So I'm fucking with the statue of AI. I'm fucking with it. Yeah. Because it goes along with the theme right. of what's going on over there with the other statue. So I'm fucking with it. Right. Right. But I'm fuck out of here if 
They, he deserve a, a, a joint. Come hey, on, yo, man. part of the left, man. Like a real official yeah. statue. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. Yes. He, he, <laughs> he deserves that. But. It I, makes sense. I love it. I'm, I'm glad that they gave him. They, you know, I'm glad that he's getting his flowers all around. Right. Not just basketball. You know what I mean? Like he's from the people. You know, he's starting to tap into business and, yep. you know, Reebok is doing a, a hell of a job by bringing him back and putting him at the at the helm of that. Shout out to Shaq. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's good to see him moving in those different lights. Shout out to Chuck, man. You're out here doing his thing. I also fell victim to the misinformation of the internet. You know what I'm saying? We saw like, it at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, yo, this is crazy. Because you're right. When you look at the screenshot, it looked bananas. Cause it, it's like a and the angle don't even help neither. Cause it's like a higher angle, so that the statue look even smaller. It looked like he's playing with like a Funko Pop or yeah. some shit like that. Some little <laughs> little G.I. Joe type shit. And I'm like, this is this is AI in Philly. Yeah. But to your point, when we, you when you when you when you read more than the headline, you know what I'm saying? When you read the, the article, you realize <laughs> it's part of a monument. Yes. Kind of like a the Yankees Monument Park, where it's like they got Mo Cheeks, they got Dr. J, they got you know what I'm saying all the Philly legends, and then AI is obviously you know took his rightful place yes. among those legends. You know what I'm saying? But I still think you know what I mean. Come on, man! Like the the you know what I mean? Lakers got the life size joints. You know what I mean? Like come on. Let's but the Lakers don't have a, a a ring of or like a walk of honor, like walk, walk of, of fame. Yeah, 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 you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They, they got their own thing. There's only a couple people that could get statues out there with the Lakers. You know what I mean? So yeah, in Philly. Yeah. yeah, they got Barkley like they out wanna, there. They want to honor, they cultures, they honoring differently. Right, right. You know, so. so yeah, I we, fuck with it. I'm, 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 I'm about time. We fucking with it. About hey, time. I shout out, to, shout out to you getting your flowers. You know That's what I'm saying? Shout out to Six is finally doing right by you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we fucking with it. Yeah. Fucking with it. So you got like a favorite memory uh, with AI, playing with them, you know what I'm saying? Or... Or like a specific play even. You know what I mean? Because there's certain moments where you see a superstar really be a superstar. My favorite memory playing with Chuck is like the fact that I was able, like I'm learning, like I'm watching him, how he prepares for games. Because, you know, it's everybody prepared for, game, for games yeah. differently. But you hear narratives of, of, of Chuck and people, you know, when they get traded and, you know, you got to break those narratives. And a lot of times those narratives don't be true. You know what I mean? They be false. So I remember like as the season going on, and I'm just I'm like studying like how he's getting ready for the games and how he come in and how early he come in and what he do. Cause again, I still gotta learn personnel, right? So I'm I'm learning, I'm peeping him, how he, you know, getting dressed and sneakers and how he lay his shit out on, you know, how he lay his towel on the floor and you know what I mean? Like, what shoe he put on first? What sock he put on first? The Walkman that he, you know, I'm, I'm paying attention to all of this. I got to learn the music he's listening to. He's listening to fucking Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. Like, and I'm like, oh shit. Like, I, you, I would be expecting to be listening to, you know, some, some crazy some, shit. Yeah, I'm some, like, oh, some. this is, this is different. And he just vibing. He's just cooling, you know, go get his ankles taped, come back. Like, he just, uh, you know, he turned his turn into his locker. Like, so I'm like, oh shit, this is how you, this is how you prepare. I'm still learning different people, and we went from a couple hours before the game, laughing and joking, and to like the switch, and uh, and I saw the switch. So I was able to, I, I was able to experience that AI switch when he go from. The lovable, Yo, I, AI laughing, I, one headphone on, one headphone off, like Walkman, the CD player. He used to listen to the DVD, the DC walk around watching the DVD player all the time. The portable DVD? The portable Jack. DVD of Martin. <laughs> Yo. All Martin, though. So all he watched was Martin. Pre-game in Pre-game there? Pre-game is Martin. So it's like, I'm learning like how people react and, and get ready and, 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 and able to lock in and focus, but I don't know. I know he's about to go out there and, and get 40. I, I want to know how he's about to go do it. Yeah. Everybody else is working out before the games. <laughs> he ain't getting those shots up. He ain't doing shit. 
And then that switch, we about to run out and that switch hits and you see it and you understand greatness and you understand how somebody can just take it from here and take it from there in a split second and how you can lock in and how you need to lock in. Like that for me, that was my favorite experience. Like one of my favorite experiences, like being with, with, with AI and playing and playing on the same team, just wanting to learn his movements and wanting to learn how he think and just like, yo, damn, how would, cause I gotta get on the same page with him in order for this to work. Yeah, yeah. So, and <clears throat> we're very, very similar in certain ways. So it's like, yo, this is how it's gonna work. We gotta be, we gotta hang around each other. We gotta, you know what I mean? It's just a lot of things that we had to do to kind of mold that and make that work. So especially early younger in my, in, in, in my career, I was able to see like, damn, this is a superstar. Like this is how he, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm I'm trying to make my way. Up Get up there, get to that yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. So, champ, I'm thinking like, we got the seven PMEs, right? Okay. Giving out awards. Okay. If the NBA could make an award for Allen Iverson, what would it? What would that award be? What would it be for? This year's 2024 Allen Iverson <laughs> Award recipient is. <laughs> Damian Lillard for having the hardest mixtape of 2024. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and I don't want it to be like, oh, the the best the best player on the six feet six one award. Like it can't be something cliche ish like that. Um, like the a hard over height award. Like you know, it's like something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hard over height. Um. A, a cultural, you know, somebody who's who's changing cultures. That right? part, like, bro. You know, who's who's who who. I just think some that is a cultural <clears throat> trophy, I mean, cult, a cultural award. Yeah, that yeah. should be an Allen Iverson award, right? Because underneath of that culture, that means it's not just oh, I'm doing this. Like I'm, I'm actually creating a culture within our culture yeah. and, 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 and adding to our culture and being creative within our culture. So it's not a lot of people who are doing that. And, and, and AI was doing it like un, unknowingly because that's just what's the culture at that point in time. And that's, I was, I was, I, off of that, I was gonna ask you, like, did that make you feel more comfortable coming in? You know what I'm saying? Because you could like, yeah, I could be me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't well, got to Meaning when he came to, to Denver? So, no, no, no. Like when he came in the league, like oh, okay. 96. Yes. And they can pay y'all draft classes a lot too. Yeah, 96, I know. I'm, I'm sick of it. You already know. Like that's sick like, of it. That's like the, that's like the Jordan Bryant <laughs> debate. Like, that's sick a, of it. That's a forever debate. <laughs> so seeing him come in the league and, ha and have his own style, his own way that he carried himself and all of that, did that make you feel like, yo, more comfortable? Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I don't got to, I could be mellow, man. I could yeah, be you, 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 pick, you pick your lane. Again, it was two lanes. I mean, we, we spoke about this in, in, in earlier episodes. <clears throat> it was two lanes that was actually happening. And it was that, it was that clean cut suit, professional, Michael Jordan-esque, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that, even though, even though he was different, but it was just that lane. And then it was the, at this time, the streets, culture, attitude, ego, you know what I mean? Family, loud, enjoying hood, ghetto, like that, it was the cultural lane too. Right. So when you came in, you was one of, you was one of those. So yes, he, he definitely changed that. And I had to go that route. I had to, because that was the route, that was the only route that I, I knew of at that, at that time. You, That's the only route I knew at that at that point in time. The boxy suits, it, it wasn't for you. Nah, only on boxy draft suits, only boxy on boys, night. and all like the that. Box <laughs> <laughs> nah, the boxy suits wasn't wasn't for me. And I used to have yeah. arguments, you know, debates with my agent back then. At the time, he was like, "Mel, you got to put a suit on." I was like, "Nah." He used to always tell me, "Yo, talk to me in five years. Talk to me in five years." You gonna, you gonna be having a suit on, you gonna put a suit on. So there's a lot of like media out there, you know what I'm saying, of you and AI like together. And it looks like the relationship is like, kind of like a like mentor, big bro, like, listen, I've been here. Like, is it is it like that for real? 
I was considered at this time like AI's little brother, like at the time, right? And it was like, even though he's going through what he's going through, he was the only one that I could <clears throat> look at and look up to that because he's, I felt like he was the only one who understood my dynamics and what I was dealing with and what I was going through and still have to be somewhat of elite on a daily basis. So <clears throat> that's the only thing I could base it off of was looking at him and saying like, damn, how the fuck he's, every day he's, <clears throat> it's Philadelphia every season, Allen Iverson, Larry Brown, it's every single day. And then you have, the, you have the headline and then you look at the stats and the games and it's like, damn, he's, going through all of this and getting 40s and 45s and 50s and carrying a team at six foot, six one, like this is, this is crazy. So I started to like, no matter what is happening off the court or around me, I'm still gonna go out there and perform, fuck it. And there's not a lot of people who can, <clears throat> who understands that. So when he came to Denver, it was almost like, Damn, like, nigga, you home now. Like, yeah. big bro is home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So now, even though he went through his experiences and, and, and maybe still was going through some experiences, he was still able to, like, yo, champ, like, oh, uh, nah, nah, leave that shit alone. Like, he was still able to give me that. <clears throat> and I'm like, damn, this, nigga, this, what? Nigga, you telling me that? Like, you telling me that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, and nah. then I started to just learn and, like, flip. My mindset a lot, and, and and like he was he was very he was a big brother that you look for, right? They who just come home type of shit. Like that's how, that's how he was. Your brother, yeah, been, yeah. brother been up north for a while. Come home, you talking to him, but you see him from afar. And letters and notes and putting you on game and stuff, right? And then when you knowledge. come home, you really getting that one on one, the shit that you know what I mean, that information that how to do it firsthand firsthand right so that was that and he always was right there i was getting through i was getting in this shit he he right there by my side press conferences well usually it's it was him it's usually him in that seat right and then you look and see who's next to next to him so having him by my side in these press conferences and you know while i'm fucking up off the court having him <clears throat> i got you i'm here I've been, I know how to navigate I, I, I've this. I've been through this already, yeah. right? So he was always that. He was always, no matter what, <clears throat> no judgment. We got him been through it too, all right? All right, man. Rap, we were talking about it last week, man. It's, it's, it's heating up. Time was ticking. It's the sport, yeah. We were talking about the, Drake was on the clock. Hey, 23 seconds left on the clock. He said, has he pulled from three? Ah. <laughs> Bang! Drake for three! Came out with the 50 push-ups, I believe, is the name of the track. Is is the uh, unofficially or officially. And he went at Kendrick, he went at Future, he went at Metro Boomin, shut your whole ass up and mix the drums. He went at Bro. Uh, the weekend. The weekend. Nav. Everybody, bro. Like, I think he dissed Eddie Murphy. I'm not sure. Like, he's just out here going crazy, just blah, 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 letting the, letting, the, letting the chopper off. So, are we fucking with it or fuck out of here to Drake this as, as like the first, you know, Drake, the first Drake shot, pa pa, in, in, in the battle? I don't condone violence. Now that was that was a metaphorical. I know, I'm gonna I'm 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 spin a block back. But I just want to make that PSA. <laughs> I don't condone violence. I don't condone the beefs and all of that shit. So let me just say that. On the flip side of that, with that being said, Drake shot back. He feel like it's twenty v one right now. Is it's he said it. So I. I like how he gave everybody they shine. He gave everybody their moment on that song. The Drake over. That's how I've been calling it. He gave everybody your moment. Like, you get your moment. You get your moment. I'm very direct with who I'm talking about. I'm very intentional on what I'm saying. And he's saying, I'm not letting up. So I fuck with it. 
<clears throat> I fuck with it. I fuck with I fuck with it because it's hard to do that. Yeah, it's hard to shoot at twenty. It's hard, and and not tw- not like it's twenty. Hard like, to shoot you know, at twenty. Like so, you know, I'm just I'm just saying because he mentioned tw- twenty v one. Yeah, like it's a lot of Ross was in there, Rose was in there, a lot of people, yeah. man. So yeah, nah, he's he's so he's I, the fuck, real I fuck with him responding and how he how he responded. Now nah, it was go time. Okay, so I got a similar take. The only difference is Drake is. I f- always feel like Drake had been strategic with his shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like the way, like yo, I'm gonna do this at this time. Yo, I got beef with this rapper. I'm gonna dro- I'm gonna drop this song, like the Meek situation. I'm gonna drop back back to back, and you're gonna hear this all summer in the club, or at OVO Fest, like everywhere. You're gonna hear this. Mm-hmm. So I fuck with, I'm fucking with him coming out and shooting and clapping back. The way that it dropped though. The league, yo, we don't know. Because now, you know, it's 2024, Chick. You don't know that. You it's, don't know that. But it's 2024. Did he leak it? It, 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 <laughs> it could have been strategic. But that's also another thing. When you, th- when you talk about Drake, that could have been part of the strategy. If it was part of the strategy, I don't know. Because we're in 2024, Chick. Like, they, you AI. You think that was a strategy, though? AI is a motherfucker. You think that was a strategy, though? I, it could have been. It could have been, yo, let's leak this. This is what I was thinking, right? Do you believe it was a strategy? I think it could have been. You believe it was been. part of the overall strategy. I think it could have been, yo, let's drop this, see how people react. If they're like, oh, he got him, then all right, let's go ahead and drop some art with it and drop the master version. You think somebody, you think it was a strategic, a strategic leak? A strategic or leak. Or somebody in this camp leaked it? I think it was a, a strategic leak because like, Yo, Drake been, I mean, as far as I know, am I bugging? Like, his albums, they haven't, like, not that they haven't leaked, but it hasn't been, like, egregious. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Where it's just like, yo, the album out, the shit leaked three months before it dropped type of shit. Man, he dropped albums on tour. He, you know what I mean? He dropping all type of different sounds of music. Right. And he, he got other shit going on. But so because of that point of he got all the other shit going on, for him to take that time out to shoot back at every single person, I fuck with that. I'm super fucking with it. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, roll it out a little nicer better next time. You know what I'm saying? Let me get some cover art. <laughs> let me get a little video. Because Drake is creative. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's go time now, though, yeah. baby. It's go time. It's, so. You got to. With, with, with everybody. Get the Whoever's gloves involved. on me. Whoever's get it, involved. Get it shaking. Ross dropped the disc. You know what I'm saying? He came, came fire. out. Fire. was fire. He, he, he came out and said, white boy. That is funny. He said the white boy. And that's so. Yeah, all right, listen, so let's, that let's get into funny. this. Hold on. That is funny. That's crazy. Shit. And that's the shit. So let's get uh, into it. Ross is a funny nigga. Because that's man. the shit, bro. It's like, yo, because <laughs> as fans of rap music, right? Like, yeah. I don't know why I said that, like, Glow Rilla. I said rap mu- music. As fans of rap, you want to hear the, the bars, right? Like, yo, let's go back and forth. I want to hear song, shot back, song, clap back. Ah, uh-uh. ah. But then the motherfucker like Ross come into play, <laughs> where it's just like, it's not necessarily about the bars. It is about the bars. Don't, don't dispute that. It, no, 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 it is. But with, a, with him, it's like, you get extra. Yeah, Cause he's gonna, gonna do the like social media. Yeah, he wanna make you like a goofy, that's right. Make, exactly, bro. <laughs> he wanna try shit, to make you look like a goofy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, dog, when you are in the middle of a, a battle, a rap battle, yeah. that's part of the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, cause a, Drake did it too on his shit. no rules. He, he, no rules. He said, yo, Drake, uh, Kendrick got a size seven shoe. Yeah. That's crazy. Shout out to me. <laughs> that's that's cra- no, listen. <laughs> that shit Ross said is funny as shit. Fight boy. Huh? Just only he can come up with the say you know some shit. Like, like, out, out of any and everything he can fucking possibly say. Fam. For him to say that. that when, he was, when he had the shit going on with 50, he was like, you motherfucking monkey. And he was it's just saying this shit. It's always one words, though. It's always like it's the, one. Because <laughs> the nigga pick a most random ass word or some, or some shit that's so regular, but he make it sound crazy. Like, he just called the nigga white boy. That's regular. That, that ain't no crazy. Da- but the, but the I wasn't white expecting boy. that. That's the whole thing. That's what <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting him to say that. That's just cool. <laughs> nah, that shit was funny, man. Yeah. This shit is, you know, Ross is, Ross is funny, man. Ross funny as shit, man. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know. I just want to see who's next. I want to see who else. Right. Who, That's what I'm saying. saying is who, who, who's next. up next? You know what I mean? Who keep, gotta... us, keep us entertained, but keeping it sound the ring. You get what I'm saying? That part. That's all. Keep it, keep it peace. You know what I'm saying? No bodies. You know what I'm saying? Like just lyrical bodies. You know what I mean? And next up. 
Wayne Gang. We got, <laughs> my, listen, man, Overtime. <laughs> overtime got a, uh, posted a clip of this prep game where a young player at the free throw line did this. For all those that are listening on the audio version, man, he took a step back free throw. This is crazy. This must. This is new. We about to see. Yeah, yeah. This this will make Patrick Ewing be like, you practice that shot. Oh, oh, oh not the step back. Oh, 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 oh shit! This is step back free throw. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. Somebody told him, yo, just get it. How you get at the free throw line? Yo, just get it. Yo. Just, it's more effort to do all of that than it is to just stand there so, and shoot. Is that what happened? Is is he? A, is this okay? So, Coach Mello, walk me through this. Is this? <laughs> is this the coach being like, "Hey, look, bro, you you you, your free throw shooting is atrocious." Yeah, okay. Just, but you can shoot. Okay. In other ways. Okay. Just get like you said. Just get it how you get it, bro. When okay. you get up there, if you got to step back, step it back, step it back. If you got a tween. And pull it, just... First of all... If you got to dribble and step into it... No, it's definitely not that. <laughs> I'm yelling, what the fuck? Bro, what the fuck are you doing? Like, we're in the gym and you do that shit. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Who taught... Like, that's disrespectful. That's that's the disrespect of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no. And I sound like an old nigga. This old that, this that's this old Come on, man. Old, like, man, this old motherfucker, man. Listen, I'm man. all about the evolution of the game. This old motherfucker, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The evolution of the game and growing the game and making it more fun and exciting and trying different things. That is fucking crazy. <laughs> you might as well take free throws out the game if they start doing that shit. Yo! <laughs> you can't. That's supposed to be a violation. So think you about like You this. don't get that bucket. Did they count that bucket? Behind the line, is you good. Like Man, line. you can't. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Dude, nah that's that's Little Kemba free throw. That's the shit I, I I start my my workout out with, in a side step. You can't do that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no. But I just say something to your point. That could be, like this is how this is the only way I can shoot my free throw. Like I'm comfortable with shooting my free throw like this. Or he was just fucking with the other with the opposing team. <laughs> <laughs> So either way, it's crazy. Yeah, nah. Regardless, way, crazy. you wildin', my So nah, guy. I'm not fucking with it. Nah. Fuck so, out of here. <laughs> fuck out of here. Yeah, nah, that's... Uh, listen, me personally, I'm low-key fucking with it because I'm a fan of the untying the shoelaces at that's the free throw line. That is different. Shot the swish. <laughs> <laughs> I like motherfuckers fucking around and making the game points to take. <laughs> no, that's crazy right there. <laughs> <laughs> and step back fucking free throw. But he looked like, you know, like he used to doing it. Like, you practice it. Can you pull that video up again, please? Because that's what I'm saying. Like, it looked like, like just like how you said, this is how I start my practice. Yeah, look. It looked pop. like pop, 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 that. Cash. Oh, he practiced that. <laughs> oh. He counted dribbles. Pop, pop. Sturdy. That's sturdy. Sturdy, sturdy, sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> that shit coming right now, back. I fuck with the, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't fuck with it. Cause it looks crazy. Maybe I just don't understand why he did it. But it looks crazy. <laughs> ah. I fuck with it because it looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so as a as an offensive, as a as a certified bucket getter, you know what I'm saying? Is the step back the most dominant skill for a shooter to have today in the NBA? That's that that clean, ah, create separation. Well, yes, the game is about separation anyway, so you want to get as separated from the guy as possible. I do think the step back is a much needed like add on to everybody's game. It's just when you do it. Now you see some people just doing it just to do just it. To do it. <laughs> Every day they do it just Let me show you what I got to get my out back. of bed and the first move they do is they sidestep with no ball. <laughs> <laughs> He starts up into the shower, nigga. Like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. We used to walk around the hallway and, and act like we shoot and act like we dunking. Now, spend, you might spend some time, but now it's a step back. You walk <laughs> through the crib and no basketball, you're stepping back. There's no reason. So it's, it's becoming your natural movement now for everybody. Right. It's just when you do it. You got to know when to do it, when not to do it. Some people have mastered it to where that is their signature. What's the perfect step back scenario 
the perfect step back scenario. Hmm. Like if you go and pass somebody, like if you dribbling, if I'm dribbling right and I got a defender like staying close to me, right? But I know he's over aggressive. Right? I know he want to beat me to the spot. Yeah. I'ma just make I'm gonna get to the spot that he want me to get to, and then I'm gonna separate <laughs> myself. Then I'm gonna step back. <laughs> so now you 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 gotta keep going. So the step back look crazy. If I go and you go at the same time. And then you get to the spot that you really want me to get to because you know that's the spot that I can get back in front of the offensive man. Then I'm stepping back. And it ain't really nothing. You look crazy because you, you look you're crazy. still going. <laughs> yeah, it looks crazy. Like you see guys like, like Shea got that. Mm. He just play at his own pace. You ain't going to speed him up. He going to go. You're going to be over aggressive and he going to snatch back. He going to step back. Like you see Steph. Steph does it. Uh, Luca does it at his oh, own pace. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when certain people do the step back, Jalen Brunson does it. Yeah. Dame, side step. Tatum, side step right. Like, it's side step left. Like, it's, this is what's happening. So when you see people that do it, and it becomes part of their DNA, and then you see people who just do it, just to be doing it, it don't look the same. Kemba shit was crazy. Not to be a Bronx, you know what I'm saying, Homer. Nah, Kemba, you know saying? Kemba, Kemba step back Kemba was stupid. Kemba was known for a step back. <laughs> and the, the scouting report was, he gonna step back. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, so you fuck, so going back to the fucking with the fuck out of here, you fucking with the fuck out of here, step back jumper as your free throw <laughs> shooting crazy, fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. <laughs> On the prep scene, bro, because you out there. <laughs> Kai out there, the prep, we out here getting ready. You seeing a lot of talent out there, but the, it's like you said, it's a younger generation. It's disrespectful it's out old, there. These old motherfuckers. The what's the, some shit that you old motherfucker, you don't see? The crazy shit is that I'd be like, nah, I wouldn't be able to take that. It's like, when somebody get banged on, somebody get dunked on, like crazy. And then, not, that don't even bother me. The too small don't bother me. It's just when, Nigga jump in your face and, and everybody come around and start yelling at the top of ah! hey, Yo, that right <laughs> Yo, I'd have been like Marlon Wayne on Don't Be a Menace when he hit all the kids. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, that yo, yo Nah, that is disrespectful. I'd be violent. looking at that like, yo, nah. Could it be me? Like, nah. <laughs> you get banged on nigga yelling in your face? Ah! Like, I'm all for that type of shit, but here is it. <laughs> and they seeking me out to yell at me like, nah. Bro, what? Like you fell over and here? And if you fall, it's even worse. Oh, nah. The step over? Over top yelling at you. Ah! <laughs> That's that, crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. That's crazy right there. <laughs> so if anybody get dunked on out there on the prep level, and they allow that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that top don't allow that shit. Don't allow yo, that. Yo, bedroom, coach, put him and say, yo, you sit. Yeah, don't allow minutes. that shit, man. No, I'm not, you sit again, the I'm whole not the violence. <laughs> saying, that's violent right there. Yo, the step over yelling is the crazy. Because it's just like, yo, my man, you got the Frank right here. Like, you wilding. <laughs> You're wilding, bro. You cannot do that. You wilding right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But nah, that's. Yeah, that's crazy. That, yeah. the, the, the tap head, yell, scream, three niggas coming around. That is crazy. <laughs> Jumping the chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Nah, they throwing crazy. it up and shit. They doing handshakes. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, yeah, they doing handshakes and shit. Nah. Yo. Camera, all the cameras is on the court. Oh, oh, you already know. Yeah, nah. How's the highlights in that bitch? Yeah, nah. <laughs> I, I'm the first time I ever saw that. I said, what the fuck? That's what's going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I gotta get back in tune to what's happening. Yo. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's a fact. That's, my, that's a fact. Shout yo, out to my yo, guy Cat. Relax. Stay mellow, man. Stay mellow. Call me the Mr. Chaos, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah. When, when in doubt. 
When in doubt, you already know. Stay fact. mellow, baby. Yo, shout out to JJ Reddick. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, my guy, for coming through. Duke Legend, doing a little playoff preview with us. You know what I mean? Breaking indeed. it down, a little something, something. Stay locked in at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? We will be here next week, y'all.